he was very much like many men I've worked with um, during the years that I worked in the prison system and uh, maximum security hospitals. He was um, much more like people I've worked with that were just in straight corrections. Um, he was very conversational. He was engaging. We were able to have uh, conversations about things that it happened we both had shared interests and so I was able to get a sense of uh, things he liked, things he didn't like and he he seemed other than things that have happened in his life history and things that he's done, it was in a lot of ways a very normal conversation. The impression that I had was that he did not meet the criteria for any of the major psychiatric disorders um, that we typically see in these settings. It was my opinion that he did not meet the criteria for an autism spectrum disorder. I did think he met the criteria for a diagnosis that we call antisocial personality disorder, um, which we don't consider to be a, a, a brain illness as much as um, um, an adaption that people have. Personality disorders are looked at as something a little different than um, regular psychiatric disorders. And other than that, the only other psychiatric um, diagnosis was a history of alcohol misuse. Was there anything unique about the idea that uh, someone who's in a violent situation, stabbing people to death, would have some sort of physiological response to that? I would say it's a normal reaction. Um, we teach the fight or flight reaction. It's a well-described neurologic phenomenon in not just humans, but all mammals, most even reptiles and birds have some version of it. In reviewing Dr. Warford's report and Dr. Andrew's reports, did you see the indication of a brain abnormality such as organic <coughs> brain disease or damage? I didn't. The description of the fight or flight reaction sounded straight from a textbook. Did you ultimately reach a diagnosis in this case regarding German Christian? Yes. And I'm going to ask you in a minute how you reached the diagnosis and show the jury. But first, if you could just preview for us, what was your diagnosis? I had two diagnoses. One was antisocial personality disorder, and the other one is what we call alcohol use disorder. And you didn't notice, you didn't learn anything about psychopathic traits or tendencies in his mother and father? It was unusual, but I've seen it many times where one child is the first person in the family to have run ins with the law. And you didn't notice anything about antisocial personality disorder or learn anything about that diagnosis as it might have applied to his parents? No, he didn't have a lot of the things that you see in people whose families are antisocial. There wasn't much in your report about limbic system or fight or flight, but I think you discussed that on direct examination. Do you remember that? I did. And the executive function impairment that uh, is mentioned in your report is really in that section regarding Dr. Andrews and her testing. Is right. That right. He had some abnormalities in his testing, particularly with uh, what we call visual motor activity, sort of coordinating uh, what you see and what your movements are. Um, and that was, um, I think, two standard deviations below the mean, which means that it was significant. Um, I didn't know how to really uh, connect that to the circumstance of the case. And I think most of the defense experts may have had the same thing, that they all noted it, but it was hard to connect that particular finding. Um, on the other hand, you weren't here when Dr. Andrews testified. And no, I, I'm only basing it on the reports. I haven't seen the testimony. Understood. Uh, how confident are you of your diagnosis of antisocial personality disorder, in this case involving Jeremy Crusher? Object, vouching for himself. Overruled. It's my opinion with reasonable medical certainty. So I think it's. Um, when I look at the evidence, I believe he meets the criteria.